Hello, I'm Michael Rule, an in vivo imaging specialist with Spectral Instruments Imaging. Welcome to an introduction to preclinical in vivo optical imaging. Preclinical optical imaging is a small research model imaging modality that offers non-invasive, relatively quick data collection without intensive user training while remaining largely true to the three R's. With optical imaging, researchers can monitor biological processes taking place in living organisms from plants to caterpillars to fish to axolotls to mammals and do so non-invasively. One might ask, why use preclinical optical imaging instead of standard histological processes in microscopy? Well, there are a variety of useful features with optical imaging. One can see and capture real-time processes and do so longitudinally. Optical imaging, along with other preclinical modalities, offer the ability to view and explore the mechanisms of disease and other biological conditions while overcoming the limitations of histological time point based analysis. Instead of dealing with the variability of comparing different individuals at different time points, one can use one cohort repeatedly. Longitudinal data is collected with the same individuals, greatly reducing the number of individuals needed over the course of a study. Data collection is far less intensive, and due to its molecular sensitivity, optical imaging allows detection of the beginnings of a disease process prior to obvious symptoms or behavioral changes. This modality applies to a variety of research applications. By capturing and analyzing bioluminescent fluorescent light emission, in vivo optical imaging systems can help researchers visualize and monitor molecular activity and use the results to track gene expression or the efficacy of genetic modification, cancer growth, the onset of spread of disease, bacterial viral infection, the effect or lack of a new drug candidate, even inflammation and oxidative stress. There are two major types of optical imaging reporters, bioluminescent and fluorescent. In both instances, the system uses a light type box and a CCD camera to detect light. In vivo bioluminescent imaging typically utilizes the luciferase, the enzyme that makes certain insects, jellyfish, and bacteria glow. The luciferase gene is incorporated into the cells and when active and in the presence of its substrate, typically an injected luciferin salt, causes a reaction that emits light. In vivo fluorescence imaging utilizes a fluorescent reporter, a molecule that emits a photon when excited by a particular wavelength of light. Fluorescent reporters can be proteins, dyes, nanoparticles, or quantum dots. So what kind of data do we get from these images? That is, how do we quantitate this visualization of light? Quantitation is easy. In the software are tools for analysis called regions of interest or ROIs. One chooses the type of ROI that is best for the study and draws it onto the image and places it around the light expression overlay if needed. This could be a whole body ROI, a focal square, or a circle, an ROI drawn to match the overlay, or an oval. The resultant readout is that of light over time or photons per second, as these arrows indicate. And that's the study's publishable data. The data is then also simultaneously recorded into an exportable table for records and analysis. As I touched on earlier, there are other often complementary preclinical modalities. And to be fair, no single modality has a lock on being the best strategy for every experimental need. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Optical imaging has some distinct advantages over the rest of them and a couple of disadvantages that we will cover. Okay, let's take a quick look at optical imaging's advantages and we'll cover the disadvantages. Advantages include incredible sensitivity, fast data capture, high model throughput, and non-invasiveness. Disadvantages include low tissue penetration and difficulty measuring internal target size. The first advantage is that of sensitivity. Robust system designs detect light emissions as low as 45 photons per second per centimeter squared per steradian and can also detect tiny amounts of luciferase enzyme and fluorophore units. The sensitivity differences between modalities can be considerable. Here's a great example of optical versus MRI and micro CT, both of which work at the cellular level and are great at detecting soft tissue changes. Optical works at the molecular level, so changes in disease states can be detected much sooner. Shown here in this circle, we have the detection of firefly luciferase from human lung carcinoma cells visualized in the capillary bed of mouse lungs as soon as two hours post tail vein injection. Further out between four and nine weeks, the luciferase signal is considerable as the tumors expand. However, both micro CT and MRI can only just detect tumor nodules as seen with these red arrows. Optical imaging sensitivity offers an indication of disease onset and progression much earlier than micro CT or MRI. However, the co-registration of them is also quite powerful. 
The next advantage of optical over other modalities is fast data. Acquisition times for bioluminescence and fluorescence imaging range from half a second up to five minutes, typically between 30 and 60 seconds. Below we have a series of acquisitions from a pure capture perspective that took only four minutes exposure total for 40 data points. Here's another acquisition of five mice with five data points using just 30 seconds of exposure time. This is in clear contrast to other modalities, which can require acquisitions from roughly one to 30 minutes. Another advantage is high model throughput. Most other modalities offer analysis of a single mouse. Some can offer limited analysis of up to two to four animals at a time. Optical imaging systems can rapidly capture data from five mice with some able to handle up to 10 mice at one time or two adult rats. And finally, other than substrate of fluorophore injections, the process is non-invasive. In most animal systems, for example, they are anesthetized quickly via isoflurane, maintained on an anesthetic plane, while resting on a heated platform. Devices are available for keeping models anesthetized and isolated from the inside of the imaging chamber and from other organisms as well. Now a couple of disadvantages. Photons of light are scattered, absorbed, and reflected by living tissue. Consequently, the range of penetration for the visible spectrum through living tissue runs only as deep as about a centimeter. That range increases from the blue-green range of GFP at 500 nanometers to the near-infrared of ICG up in the 800. This lack of depth is due to a few different factors, such as scattering and absorption from different levels of melanin and absorption of blue light by oxygenated hemoglobin in the blood. Another disadvantage, the overlays shown are not quantitative of organ size as displayed or between different organs due to the scatter reflection and absorption of light as well as the location of the organs. On the left, we can see optical light and a 2D x-ray overlay for liver and spleen, which look quite similar in size based on light expression, even though in a mouse, we know these organs are not. Another example here is with induced lung inflammation in a targeted reporter. In vivo analysis appears to show greater inflammation in the liver, but ex vivo analysis shows the lungs with greater signal. Apples to orange comparisons of tissues, especially ones at different depths, may not be accurate with optical imaging. So how does optical imaging assist with the three Rs? Optical and vivo imaging fundamentally changed how animal models are imaged and analyzed while firmly embracing the three Rs with fast, non-invasive, high throughput, longitudinal data collection. With regards to reduction, optical imaging allows for a great reduction in the animal numbers needed for longitudinal studies. Instead of sacrificing and performing histology at various time points, smaller numbers of animals can be imaged across a timeline. Refinement. Optical imaging is non-invasive. Animals are anesthetized quickly, imaged quickly, recover quickly, and are kept warm during imaging. The refinements function to reduce stress and remove discomfort from research animals. And replacement. Somewhat esoteric, but deceased ex vivo tissues can be used for infectious studies, as can plants, fruits, vegetables, cells, organs on a chip, organoids, and even 3D bioprinted tissues. As these options hopefully become more reliable as stand-ins for animal models, and for translational data, they can be imaged easily in optical systems. Let's talk setup, which is relatively straightforward for both facilities-based and animal care and use protocols. Facility needs are not unusual. An outlet with a surge protector or two outlets can serve the system and the PC and ancillaries. Benchtop systems are around four feet tall, two feet wide and deep, weighing in at about 250 pounds. So you want a sturdy table or bench with room for the unit, a mouse, monitor, keyboard, PC, and anesthesia system. Floor standing units are about seven feet tall. So you'll want space for those. The anesthesia system needs an outlet for the vacuum pump, medical oxygen or air, of course, to drive the system, and you'll need the appropriate compliance documentation for isofluorane. Typically, these systems are readily added to animal care and use protocols. Attention is often most focused on surface sanitization between uses, which is often molded by current protocols in the facility with guidance from the system manufacturer as to what is appropriate and tolerable for proper system safety and operation. But these are commonplace concerns within a research facility and are typically not difficult hurdles. Last but not least is the ease of use of the systems themselves. These systems have a gentle learning curve and nearly all levels of personnel can operate them. While the functionality of optical imaging systems vary slightly from vendor to vendor, our systems typically require only an hour or two of training to get folks up and running on basic acquisition and analysis. Systems and software are intuitive, offering easy click acquisitions for new users or more manual control for seasoned veterans. Animal care and handling techniques are routine, from anesthetic induction to recovery, IP, sub-Q, tail vein injections of dyes, substrates, cells. 
even entry-level technicians can be rapidly brought up to speed on the workflow to image small animals. So to close out quickly and summarize, preclinical optical imaging offers a real-time non-invasive method to collect molecular level data via bioluminescence or fluorescence reporter expression of light, allowing for more data from fewer organisms while increasing the statistical power and reducing experimental variation in cohort size. The refined model management and fast acquisition process keeps cohorts in a stable, temperature controlled and anesthetized environment as needed. And these systems may be used with in vitro assays as those become more relevant and possibly able to replace animal models. Thank you for viewing. If you have any questions after this event is over, are interested in more info or would like to chat regarding applications, please do reach out to either SI Imaging or myself. Thanks again.